Hey, hey, Tony Gaskins here. Popping in real quick. Let me get this a little closer to me. God forgive my fan on behind me in, in, in the next room. So if you hear that fan, forgive me. But I wanted to touch on something because I was looking and I was sitting and I'm like, man, I get a lot of questions, but sometimes they're so specific I can't touch on it to everybody. So I want to touch on a post I made the other day and the post is, is to the men and it's saying, do it right. Men do right. Like do it right the first time. And I want women to understand the reason why men push you to the edge. Now this is kind of human nature. It has a lot of humans do this. It's not just men. But when you think about it, as people, we typically try to get away with any and everything we can get away with. We typically want to get away with as much as we can without trying to change our life. So if we could get away with, it's kind of like this. If you go in on your job and you're supposed to be there at nine o'clock, but you, but you get stuck in traffic, and you get in there at 9.30 and nobody says anything to you about being there at 9.30. And you getting paid from 9 a.m. to the time you get off. And you walk in there at 9.30. Oh. Then the next day, you get stuck in traffic. You walk in there at 9.45. Nobody says anything to you about it. So now this happened three, four, five times. Nobody's saying anything to you about this. After the fifth, sixth time, you're like, hmm, I could sleep 30 more minutes and just go in at 930 because nobody saying anything. They don't notice in otherwise. So why am I busting my butt trying to get that nine? When I could just go in 9.30, let me just wait 30 more minutes before I leave the house and maybe some of the traffic will be gone. So that's what you're going to do. That's human nature. That's human nature. When you file your taxes and you put on there that you got, that you braid hair and that you made 12000 but you lost 15000 and then you get an extra $3,000 put on your taxes and the IRS don't call you. Mm. Okay. Well, all right. Well, next year I might do eyebrows too then. <laughs> okay. I do eyebrows. Do eyebrows and I do hair. <laughs> what am I going to do next year? I'm, I do lawn care now. <laughs> So now you got all these side gigs that you losing money on and you getting tax returns on top of your child care credit or whatever other tax return. I don't know how tax work, but I'm just using a random example because I know where I'm from. It's this lady. She docked the people taxes and everybody go to her. I don't live there no more, so I don't go to her, but everybody go to her and she have a line wrapped around the corner. She literally do file the taxes for a hundred people a day. Sometimes two or three hundred people in a day. And it don't take a number of 15 minutes. She she done got that good. She young. And, and the word on the street is she get everybody 3K, 5K, 7K more than what they would have got going to a legitimate place like HR Block. H and R Block. So, guess what? They do that every year. They're going to go back every year because they're getting away with it and the IRS ain't said nothing. Now, the IRS gonna, they not going to go after all them people because they didn't file the taxes. If they're going to do something, they're going to go after that lady. Go ahead and shut her down. But guess what? That's human nature. So, guess who going in there? Pastors. Pastor wife, police officers, former police officers, 
People who have jobs of integrity, they going in there. So what I just explained to you is the reason this is the answer to the age old questions. Why does a man get married and then cheat? Why does a man get in relationship and then keep talking to other women? Why does a man get with a woman and still want to go to the club every, every week? Why does a man get with a woman and then put hands on her, then curse her out, then lie to her? Why does he lie? Why does he cheat? Why does he do this? Why does he do that? Because men want to get away with as much as we can get away with. We want life to be as easy, as pleasurable as it can be. So guess what? When we give into our flesh, we don't have a relationship. If we don't have a relationship with God, we give into our flesh. When we give into our flesh, then what happens is, I ain't got my light on today on, on purpose, so... Touch your know, touch your know. Don't it look down dark in there. You ain't got the light on. You take the hat off. You cast on the shadow. That's on purpose. So thank you. Thank you for being concerned. And when you don't have a relationship with God, then guess what's going to happen? You want life to be easy. So if a man can get with a woman and have a woman, and then have this woman like a maid. So this woman, she cleaning the whole house. She got it spotless every week. She found a day or two to get the house spotless. She washing his dirty drawers, washing his dirty socks, washing his work clothes, folding his clothes, ironing his clothes, putting his clothes up. This is very common for most women to do these things. She cooking dinner three times a week, four times a week, some women five times a week, even if it's just tacos, even if it's just burgers, even if, you know, but she making a home cooked meal multiple times a week. So now what does this man have? And then if they have kids, she taking care of the kids. She wipe, she wiping the, the snotty nose. She changing the diet diapers. When the child wake up 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning with a nightmare, she get up, go put the child back to bed, read a nighttime story, turn on the nightlight, and put the child back to bed. And the man snoring like a bear in hibernation. And he don't wink, he don't roll, he don't move. He sleep right through the night. So guess what? If, the, if a man has a lifestyle, to where he has a woman, but he don't have to give her a whole lot. So he don't have long conversations. He don't get for nothing gifts. He's not bringing home a rose. He's not writing handwritten cards. He's just there every day. He there every day. They have a little minimal conversation. And then he put his TV on and he watching Netflix or watching sports or he get on his video game. He playing video games. He talk to her. He may be kind of chill. He might not yell or curse or anything like that, but he just not really engaged. He's not really asking her about her day. He's not doing that. Come nighttime, she get in the bed after she done done all the household chores. She cooked dinner. She done washed the dishes. She get in the bed. And he stick a hand over there. He put his hand over there on her stomach or booty cheek and then go to trying to rub round. And then now she on her back. And what she telling herself is, I got to do this because if I don't keep him happy, if I don't do it, another woman will. That's what she's telling herself. So when it looks, when you look at it, she's like a maid a butler, a nanny, a chef, and a prostitute. And what's being done for her is her bills are paid. And when 
she has a headache or even if she don't have a headache and she give him some, but then the next night he goes and he can choose his phone and he gets on the app, the nasty app, and he watching that. And if she the type that she'll let him cast it to the TV and watch it on the TV and then do to her what's being done on the TV, that's exactly what he'll do. If she the type that'll just let him watch it on the TV and take care of himself, that's what he's going to do. If she the type that know he watching it and he going to go to the bathroom and take care of himself, and she know that, that's what he going to do. Now, as you hear this, you like, what in the world? Like, what kind of man would do that? Like, what man would do that? Any man would do that. Any man would do that if that's what he is allowed to do. Anti man. And so, because human nature is to be as comfortable as possible. And with comfortability, a lot of times we think pleasure makes us comfortable. So, a man is going to push you to the edge, he's going to test you. He's going to see what you will and won't allow. Now, here's the thing. As men, we have the ability to use inference. We can read between the lines. So if a man comes in late one day, he comes over to your place late. He say, hey, I'm going to be there by midnight when I get off work. And he comes three o'clock in the morning. If he gets checked on that, he gets chewed out, he doesn't get let into your place, and then he get told by himself, because he got stopped right there, okay, boom, he gonna take note. If he goes to yell at you, and you shut it down and say, do not ever raise your voice at me. And if he go to yell through and you pack up and you leave, now you just taught him yelling is absolutely not acceptable. If he curse at you, if he call you out your name, if he go to put hands on you, grab you by your arm or do anything, you know, anything physical, you shut it down, you cut him off and you get distance. You just taught him that is not allowed. So the fact that we can read between the lines, what this means is that if a man sees that you will not let him come in late, you will not let him yell at you, you will not let him get physical with you, then he automatically knows from that he knows that you're not going to be okay with him watching nasty movies. That you're not going to be okay with a threesome. That you're not going to be okay with him break up the makeup all the time. Because you have set standards in place. And you have showed him that you are not accepting any behavior that is not becoming of a man. You're not accepting any behavior that is less than the best. That is less than the best treatment he can provide. You're not accepting anything less. When you show him that. I got a money order on here. Um, now, um, somebody sent me a money order. And in the amount of $2.18 sent me two money orders. And it says member. And I think this is the payment for the blessed tribe. Now, I want to let y'all know that those you have to sign up on the on the phone or the computer to be in the blessed tribe. And so sorry. That, that ain't nothing but the devil trying to distract this here message. But somebody, you know, sent this to me. To my um P.O. Box. 
a two dollars and eighteen cent and just say like, hey, I'm a member of the blessed tribe. Like, so I don't know if the person stopped being in the blessed tribe on the computer, on the phone, and just sending that as like, you know, like a offering, like a blessing. Say, hey, here you go. I'm still supporting you, and I'm grateful for it. But I don't. I wouldn't want. I don't want it to be confused that you could that you in the blessed tribe that you could be in the blessed tribe by sending. Two dollars and eighteen cent directly to me, and not being signed up on your phone, on the app, or your computer. And I think that some people hear the blessed tribe and they see the lives, and they assume that they're in the blessed tribe because they are watching me live and watching me answer questions, and they may not be asking a question. But you're only in the blessed tribe if you got the little thing at the end of your name the little circle thing in the blessed tribe or the blessed business tribe i don't know if the blessed business tribe had a little circle i think it does but if you don't see that at the end of your name when you comment on my video then your account is not active in the blessed tribe so understand that right there but back to what i was saying which i can't really remember what i was saying so a man is going to push you all the way to the edge. And what he's going to do is if if he if you set standards and he sees that he can't get away with this, he can't get away with that, then it lets him know, oh, I can't get away with this over here. I can't get away with this over here. And so because the greater the offense is. the more he knows that he can't get away with it because now he realizes if I can't even come in late, I know I can't bring no another woman to the bedroom. If I can't raise my voice in an argument when I'm extremely mad, I know I can't put hands on them. If I can't watch no nasty movie, because she don't agree with that, then I know I can't cheat on her with no whole nother, with a real person. So guess what? At the same time, any little concessions you give, any leeway you give, you give an inch, the man going to take a foot. You give a foot, he going to take a yard. You hear what I'm telling you? He going to take a meter. He gon' then he gonna take a mile because you cannot give any leeway. So as a woman, you gotta look and you gotta say, okay, what is acceptable? What is acceptable and what's not acceptable? And this go both ways. And so my wife, the examples I I use of me coming in late, me trying to raise my voice, she shut it down. She shut it down. Found a message on Facebook. That was inappropriate when we first got together. She shut it down. Anything she seen. Had a female friend. She didn't feel too good about it. She shut it down. Anything she seen. Boom. She got right to it. So that let me know. Now, because I have a relationship with God. Before my wife. Even before my wife. I never got into her, the nasty movies. But. It's because I was nasty in real life. But because of my relationship with God, I knew that's a sin. And I was able to correct that and change that. So now I'm not faithful just to my wife. I'm faithful to God. If I didn't have faith in God and a fear and a reverence for God, then I probably would cheat on my wife. And just being a human who's giving into flesh. Now that right there, that just stung a lot of people. That just stung a lot of women. And a lot of women, I remember one time I said that and the lady D and my wife, your husband doesn't really love you because he's only faithful to you because he's a Christian, because he loves God. So that's not real love. And she DM that to me too. But what she don't realize is that humans will always default to what's pleasurable, what's fun, 
what's risky, what's whatever, unless there is a conviction in the heart. We don't just do stuff just because we good people, because we born into sin and we have a sinful nature. So as a backup to my love for my wife is my love for God or my love for my wife is the backup to my love for God. Because, and I'm explaining this to you, and, and it'll, it'll do you well if you just hear me instead of trying to argue and debate and how you disagree, because this is the horse speaking. This coming from the horse's mouth. So I know it's, it's a painful reality to say, well, if my man don't believe in God, I mean, I'm going to get cheated on. It's a very strong possibility. It, you may not, but it could be for a different reason. It could be because he have a, his third leg is coming up shorter than average. And you love him through that. And he doesn't want the humiliation of a new woman and him getting laughed at when he take it out. Men will be faithful for that. I've heard of that before. Guys are faithful for that. Guys over six foot tall, six two to six six, with a third leg that is coming up short. That's gonna keep a man. One of the guys I knew who that rumor was out there about him, cause my sister knew him. He because of his shortcomings, he dealt with underage. He dealt with younger because they were, in his mind, he thought that if they ain't had a lot, if they ain't been with a lot, then they gonna be, and his little thing will, it'll be some feeling. Whereas if he get with a full grown woman who done had her some, he would be coming up short. And that may also be an explanation of why what we heard about the singer that's on trial. I don't know if the trial going on or if he got convicted or what happened, but that could be a thing too. You never know. Now, I don't know because I remember he had a video, but the video circulated when I was in college, but hey, y'all don't forgive me. Hey, y'all got to forgive me. I'm yawning now. in the middle of talking. That's how tired of me. Me and White, I was up at like 2, 30, 3 a.m. Because my son didn't get done doing homework at like 1 something. And then I just need me some time to decompress after he go to bed. Then my wife rolled over. She went to sleep. And I, I like to let my family sleep a little bit. And I get up when they sleep. And I walk around the house and go make sure my front door locked. Make sure my pool door locked. Make sure my, other, my, my garage door locked. Make sure alarm everything. Make sure make sure everything set up. Make sure I got my old tool with me, just in case somebody take a stupid pill and want to lose their life. I'm gonna be the one to usher them to the Lord. So I like to make sure everything situated. So if they go to bed late, I'm going to bed late. And then I had to get up early this morning because Tayden had a Christmas re recital or Christmas play, not a play, like a concert, like they were singing their songs. At 8.30 this morning. So, I had to get on up. I'm about to yawn again. Hey, y'all got to forgive me. <laughs> I be like this sometime when I be shooting these videos. So, now listen to me. And because I'm tired, your memory don't be the same. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't have notes. When you see me look away, I'm not looking at any notes right now. It's just me resetting my eyes. to Because to just staring right there at the little, the little camera spot. So this is what you have to understand. And you will be teaching the man how to treat you. And we'll try to get away with whatever we could get away with. And so it's going to come a point to where you have to decide what you will and won't tolerate. And now if you're a man watching this, it go, to, it go both ways. I had to do the same thing with my wife. Anything that I don't want in my relationship, 
anything I want in my relationship, I got to nip it in the bud. I got to get right to it because if you give it some room, it's going to get bigger. It's going to grow and grow and grow. Before you know it, it will have taken over your relationship. And I was saying something before I yawned and I lost my train of thought and now I can't remember what I was saying. So y'all have to forgive me because I'm do I do these videos, every video on top of my head. Just today I'm extremely tired. But oh, you know what I was saying? When I said that if I didn't have a love for God, I probably would be cheating on my wife. I probably would take that chance. You know why? You know I would take that chance? Because as men, we love a challenge. To cheat and not get caught is a huge challenge. A lot of times, men doing this stuff for a thrill. Why do you think your son, if you ain't got no son, your friend's son climb on the roof and then jump off the roof? It's a thrill. Why do you think boys climb trees? It's a thrill. It's a challenge. Why do you think men do what we do? Why do you think men do MMA fighting and boxing? It's a thrill. It's a challenge. Yes, women do those things, but typically their father got them into it because he wanted a son and didn't have a son, so he put his daughter in it or her boyfriend got her in it or her brother got her in it. It, it ain't a lot of women that go to boxing and MMA on their own cognizance. It's typically their dad or their brother or their boyfriend or their husband that introduced them to it, that got them into it. Say, hey, you kind of rough around the edges. You kind of strong. You kind of this and that. You ever thought about doing this? And then teach them how to do it. But really, they don't be built for it. They don't be built for it. That's not a thing for a woman, boxing and MMA. Yes, they could do it. They could do it, but majority of them, now you got some that's built for it, 10% of them built for it. 90% of them, you could tell somebody made them get it. Somebody got them into that. And they didn't have any other purpose in their life at that time. They didn't know what they wanted to do, where they wanted to go. And so they, they just stuck with that. And then it started paying the bills. So it's, you got to understand that there's a different nature between a, a male and a female. The nature is not the same. And so a lot of times men cheat just for the thrill because it ain't it's no real difference about the physical act that's being done because the end result is the same. The release that you have from intercourse that's the same it is it, that's the same release it don't matter if the woman is tall if she's short if she 300 pounds if she 100 pounds if she light skin if she dark skin if she brown skin if she yellow skin purple skin green skin the release feels the same I know some men have lied to women and told them that they are magical in the bed and that they so amazing and that they so this and that. The release feels the same. It feels the same from his hand. It feels the same in, in the woman. The release feels the same. So when a man is cheating, it's not because this woman got this right here and that right there. It's for the thrill. Is for the challenge. That's why he's cheating. And that's because he doesn't have a thrill or a challenge. Now, let me let me help you understand something. We all want some things. And we all, you know, we 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 all need a fix. Like we all gotta have some kind of fix. Humans, we need something, and it's different for every person. So I don't cheat on my wife, but you know what I do? I don't cheat on my wife. I don't handle her and I don't watch nasty movies, but I have like three cars for myself, three personal cars. My family could ride in it 
And then my wife have two cars. So that's five cars that I have. And I bought my daddy a car, my mama a car, my mother-in-law a car, my sister a car, my barber a car, and my security guard a car. I bought six other people cars. And today I just booked a family of five, a seven night vacation to Cancun for next summer. And that costs us $10,000. That's my thrill. That's my fix. When we just, um, I just did the Black Friday sale, Small Business Saturday, Cyber Monday. After that sale of the courses, which grab your course if you ain't grab your course. Even when my course is normal price, they still 50% less than what the market 50% or more less than what the market says they should be listed at. So understand that. So just because you don't see sale on there, my courses still are listed way less. My life code certification right now is $1,500. I can charge all day long $5,000 for that course because that's the going rate for a reputable life coaching certification course. And so here's what you have. After I did that, that sale, I did a giveaway. So I gave eight people a $100 gift card. Amazon shut my account down, thought it was fraud. They done shut it down two or three times. So then I had to start cash apping the people because the gift card that would be sent, they'll bring it back. They'll reject it. And not too long ago, I did another similar thing to where one person got a Kindle that was like $200. Another person got a $250 gift card. Another person got $100. Another person got a $50. And then like five or 10 people, about 10 people got a $25 gift card. So that's my thrill. So, so we all have something. So it's a lot of men to what I do is crazy. You know, what I do is crazy. They like, why do you need this car and that car and this car and that car? That's my outlet because I don't cheat on my wife. I don't, I, hey, I don't watch nasty movies. And it's some men who do all of those things I just said, cheat on their wife, watch nasty movies and handle and got as many cars and give away as much money as I do. And I'm being transparent with you. Like, I feel good and get my thrill from giving. And me and my wife last night, we counted it up. Last night of what we done gave this year. The, the, the financial blessings we have given to strangers, to nonprofit organizations, to the homeless to whatever and this and that. And I'm sharing this just so you could put in, not to brag, but so that you can put in, put into perspective the release. So when we have sex, when we have a orgasm, it is a release. When that is retained, that energy and that that release from the brain, the oxytocin release, the dopamine, the serotonin, the re these releases that we feel, it has to come from somewhere else. As humans, we want that from somewhere else. So in, in a sense, um, uh, bragging, not, not literally, not in the literal sense of the word, I'm sharing this to make a point, to say... I could be drastic over here in cheating and I could sleep with other women if I wanted to. And I don't think I would get away with it, but I could do it and take my chances like some other relationship coaches have done and do it repeatedly instead of instead of them making a stupid choice and then washing their hands and saying, I'm never doing that again. They continuously did it and did it and did it. And that's how these men get exposed. But look at this. How can 
this and this way you got to understand the urge and you got to understand the flesh. You got a man who teaching on love and relationships all day, every day. You got a man who is preaching the word of God every single week. You got a man who is a politician and running for office or holding a space in office. Governor, senator, whatever. You got a man who is a police chief. You got a man who is the principal of a school. You got a man who is the president of the entire country. Guess what? All of those men, there are groups, there are men in all of those professions who in that spotlight, in that position, are living immoral lifestyles by cheating on their wives. We know somebody in all of those professions who is cheating on their wives. So what kind of thoughts and urges have to be going through the mind of males to make men cheat with so much to lose? To make, remember, remember the, the mayor of Detroit, I think it was Detroit, that's on American Greed. The mayor of New Orleans that was on American Greed. And how they were stealing the money and how they was right getting funneling the funds from the state into look into businesses, into shell companies. And they were funneling money to companies and then getting kickbacks from those companies. Like what has to be going through the mind? And so in order to become a politician, it's like. A lot of times those individuals were seen as well-to-do, the most responsible, the most respectful, the most admired to win the votes of hundreds of thousands or millions of people. You have to have something about you that makes people believe in you enough to vote for you. And so to be voted into office and to have all of this responsibility, to have this position, to have this platform and to still cheat on your wife or to embezzle money. What is the level of the spiritual warfare? And this is what I have. This is and this is why I tell women that I am not only faithful to my wife, I'm faithful to God. I have not always been the man that I am today. I had to make a decision that I was going to change. And so the reason why, because I could cheat on my wife once or twice or whatever and get away with it because Everybody don't know me. And from what I know from living life is that is not hard to come by. That is not hard to come by. You literally, a man can meet a woman at the grocery store, shoot his shot, tell her, I want to do this to you. And out of 10 women, One to three of them are going to say, OK, what's up? Let's go. Because they because women are shot out too. women have been used and abused and dogged out and flipped and tossed. They whole life from predators. It was predators when they was young and then it was grown men praying on them as an adult that a lot of women have no backbone a lot of women have no self-esteem a lot of women have no self-love and that's honestly why and this one thing that i'm gonna tell women and, and women don't like this but you will be tested by the bedroom a man who is looking for his wife this should not be the case. 
he's going to try to sleep with you very quickly. And this is just your everyday average man. And then here go women, not a man of God. Listen, men of God are no different than men of Satan. Listen to what I'm telling you. Until they really all the way lock in and commit, they no different. They got the same temptations and they commit the same sins. Have you not gone to church and seen the men that is in that church and what they in there doing? They no different than men of the devil. So stop going into this fantasy world thinking that you finna have a man approach you and he finna be perfect and he's not going to try you. You're going to get tried. The man that you marry will try you. He going to test you. The man that you marry, you're going to get tested. Listen to me. Listen to me now. I'm trying to prepare you. I'm crying out in the wilderness trying to prepare you. I'm telling you what I know, not what I think. And so a lot of them say, oh, a man of God ain't going to do that. A man of God, that's why you don't have him. Because he don't exist. A man of God is going to try you too. And then guess what? It's the God in you that's going to quicken, that's going to convict his spirit. And then he going to slap himself and say, I'm supposed to be like her. I'm claiming to love God. I'm reading my Bible every day. I'm doing this and that and the third, but I'm living a lie and I'm in a backslidden state and I'm using God for clout to, to get a woman to drop her guards. That's what he going to say to himself when you turn his advances down and then he going to get on the right track. And so a woman, whether you want to be or not, you are a catalyst in a man's life. Whether you want to be or not, you are a stabilizer in a man's life. Whether you want to be or not, listen to what I'm telling you. And this will not fail you. Listen, it's so many women that have turned a deaf ear to what I'm saying. And they come back a year later and they say, Tony, every single thing you said turned out to be true. And I apologize. I did not want to hear you. I did not like you. I stopped watching you because I did not want to hear you. But now I realize is I didn't want to hear the truth. I ain't never had a woman out of the millions of women who have interacted with my message since I've been doing this. Never once have a woman come back to me and said, Tony, you were absolutely 100% wrong. Never, never once. If it happened, I'll tell you. And if somebody comes say it, I know they lying. I know they lying. You know why? Because I done lived it thousands of times and I done seen it thousands of times. So that's where I'm speaking from. And that's what I want you to understand. So this man is going to test you. And when I, that's why I say when I'm faithful to my, I'm faithful to my wife because of my love for God. Because it's not enough love in the world for a human that'll just keep us faith, but keep us faithful. Now I love everything about my wife, and that may get me 99% of the way. But that one percent, that one percent, that's enough percentage to cheat. And and that's where my love for God could come in at if I say 99. It could be 50-50, it could be 90-10, it could be 99 for God and 1% for my wife, it could be 99. Like, like we're going to pull from different, from strength at different times in different ways. It's some. It's going to be days to where just my love for my wife is all I need. And then it's going to be days to where I see temptation and it's a, it's an opportunity of temptation that is so great that it's going to take the love for my wife and my love and fear and reverence for God to be faithful. And so last night, and I and, and if you see this uh, young lady, I seen you. But last night, a young lady, she DM me. And she's a pretty lady. She's a fashion model. And she's she says she said she want to be a speaker. Well, guess what? I have a course that say how to become a paid speaker. 
That course is for you, young lady. I did not respond to her DM. And the reason being is because although her motives appear to be pure, I don't know. So I don't know if she wants to prove to herself that when I say I no longer respond to DMs from women, I don't know if she wants to prove to herself that that's not true. I also don't know if she just wants to strike up a conversation so that I could see her and so that if I am weak in my spirit, I could shoot my shot and then she could either be with me or see that all men are the same. So I don't ever know when a woman is coming to prove to herself that all men are the same and that there are no good men. So I, res I stopped responding to DMs. And in order to reach me, you have to book me for a professional coaching session if you are a woman. I respond to the DMs of men unless I sense a spirit on the man that he likes men because then his motive could be no different than the woman who likes men. So I don't respond to men who like men unless they book me in a professional manner for a session because I'm not going to give in or be there for any sexual energy. And so it has to be a professional business transaction in order for me to respond uh, or talk to somebody one on one. Now, if it's a man who writes me and I could feel that I don't feel any perverted spirit, I don't feel any promiscuous spirit, I don't feel any type of spirit on him and, it, and, he, and he's genuinely seeking help then if I see that, I respond to it because I know how rare it is for men to reach out for help. So I respond to that and I shoot them a message. And it also shows that man, wow, it'll show that man that I really care and I really do want to help. And then I'm not on here for money and to pander. I really want to see us get better and us come together. So now listen to me. So you have to realize as a woman that you're going to be tested. There are no if, ands, and buts about it. Whether he a Christian or not, whether he a man of faith or not, you're going to be tested. A lady asked me yesterday, can I do my talks without going into religion? Absolutely not. Ma'am, don't ever in your life again ask me to deny the name of Christ. That is the most absurd thing I have ever heard. Never in your life do that. That's what Peter did to Jesus. I cannot deny Jesus because the power of Christ is so strong that I cannot deny it. Even if I wanted to deny it, I can't deny it. It's too real because I done lived it. I'm living it. It is too real. Do you hear what I'm telling you? So now listen to me. So it is very important that as a woman, you don't take anything too seriously. Don't take the good too serious. Don't take the bad too serious. And when I say the bad, I mean him trying to sleep with you. Him going, finna get ready to try to yell at you. On the first time he does it, don't take it too seriously. Because it's a test. It, it's not even, it may not even be him. Sometimes it's him now. If it's him, he's going to do it a second, a third, a fourth, a fifth, a sixth, a seventh, a eighth, a ninth, ten times. And then you will be dumb to still be there for him to have tried to put his hands on you physically for the ninth time. And a lot of people don't like the word dumb. Look it up. I mean, in a literal sense, you will be ignorant and we got to we got to hear these hard words so that we feel it. So it stings. So we understand the importance of loving ourselves, standing up for ourselves and moving on with our life. Now. The third time he tried to yell at you, the third time he tried to come in, 
late. If you stick around for the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, nine, ten times, now you at fault for anything you get, for anything he do, because you now a willing participant. Now you complicit. So you have to nip it in the butt immediately. And then from there, you never let them do it again. That second time is the last time you check him. Because he may try the second time. Even a good man, even a God-fearing man may try you twice to see if you really bought that life, to see if you really living this thing, or if you just had some courage on that day and you were faking the funk trying to look like a respectable and classy woman. He may try you a second time on whatever area it is. And it's different areas coming in late, saying he gonna call you and not calling you. Yelling at you, cursing at you, uh, flirting with another woman in, in front of you, flirting on a text or an or a inbox or an email and leaving it open for you to find. So it's different types of tests. Trying to sleep with you is different types of tests. Now, trying to sleep with you, that's a test that that may happen multiple times. And it doesn't have a whole lot of implication of him being a bad guy. He's a guy and he's he horny and he really want to see if your abstinence journey is legit. Like if you really own that or if you're doing it for clout, if you're doing it for brownie points, because there's a lot of women who are faking today for brownie points. It ain't really in them. It's not really them, but they doing it trying to look classy. But really, they may be trashy. And so that's how you see a lot of women you would call loose or whatever end up with a husband. Is they work on their body and they work on all the aesthetics, their lashes, their brows, their cheekbones, their booty, their breasts, their stomach, their thighs, their kneecaps, their calves, their hands, their feet. They work on everything aesthetically and they may not have real self-esteem, but they will play the role of a woman full of self-esteem to get this man, to see her as the complete package. And then this other woman who has complete self-esteem and she has standards and morals and values, she never going to be with a threesome or anything like that. She never going to be with being cheated on and staying because her stomach ain't right or her booty ain't right, her breasts ain't right, her body ain't right, her lashes ain't right, her brows ain't right. She'll get passed over. For the woman who done took care of everything aesthetically and may lack substance. That's why you see that happening. Because men, on average, are visual creatures and will say that they want substance, but will end up with a woman that has no substance but got everything aesthetically. But pretending to have substance so he give her credit for it. Because he likes the way she looks. Now, see, this is getting too deep now. It's getting too deep and it's draining me. Oh, Lord, it's draining me. There's so many caveats and nuances to this. It's like I could do this. I could talk on this all day long. Um, and one day, I'm going to do a full day. We're going to do a full day. We're going to have breakfast, lunch, and dinner probably. And workshop going to be expensive, though. It's going to be about $500 because I want it to be intimate. I don't want more than 50 people in there. So it's going to be $500. Because I can't make it $10 because it'd be too many people in there. It's too draining for me. Too many people coughing. Too many people want a picture. Too many people want to talk. Too many people, too many life stories. And then Q&A, it take too long and I can't finish. So I'd rather do a room with 30 to 60 people. And at that, I got to, you know, for me to be able to make sense of it, to leave home and go to a, another state that's more easily accessible then I have to, it got to be a price point. 
but I want to do a full day intensive for those of for those of you who you on the you on the verge like you ready like you really ready to go ahead and get get into a serious relationship and get married because you taking care of the other stuff in your life. You really ready to get there. I might do that, but I just got to find... Oh, I got to find a date. Yeah, y'all got to forgive me. Y'all know. So listen, in closing, because I don't want to go over an hour. I need to go take my nap too. But in closing, I got two practices with Tatum today too. And a coaching session. Lord, Lord. So now listen to me. In closing, I need you to understand that if you give a human a choice, a human is going to take the easy route. If you give a man a choice, he's going to take the easy route. So if you let a man deal with Angela, if you tell him you okay with it, if you tell him you okay with nasty movies, if you tell him, if you let him yell at you, if you let him curse at you, if you let him give you his word and not keep his word, if you let him come in the house late, if you let him club, if you let him get drunk, if you let him get high, if you let him play video games for eight hours straight, if you let him do these things, if you let him gamble, if you let him do these things, he's going to do those things. He's going to do those things. But if you stand your ground and you set standards for your life and the type of man you want to be with, if he feels you are his wife, he's going to grow. He really ain't growing. He's just making a decision because it's a duality. Both are in him. The good and the bad is in him. He's going to make a decision to be the best version of himself, the highest version of himself. He's going to make a decision to do that. And when he makes that decision, then you're going to have an absolute amazing man and an amazing marriage. And it's because you refuse to settle. You refuse to let him get away with things that you did not, that you do not feel is right or is healthy, is smart is advantageous to a long-term relationship, you're not accepting anything but his best. When you stand on that, you either going to run him off, meaning he's not for you, he's not on your level, and he's going to move on, or you're going to bring the best out of him, and y'all going to have an amazing marriage. Hey, this is Tony Gaskins. God bless you. We'll talk soon.